and action. Hello YouTube, the Tick Network 98 here. I'm Elliot. And I was just going to say, if you saw my previous important update video that I put on my channel, but I never uploaded it. So I gotta do that. Basically, the update video said I'm going to be have a few other people start uploading videos to this channel as well. Don't worry, video categories will stay about the same as they are now. Anyways, moving along. On my screen, I have Linux Mint KDE 13. Now, a lot of people are probably thinking, Elliot, what the heck is Linux Mint KDE 13? Well, Linux Mint is an operating system, like Windows or Mac OS X, except it's free. Oh, did I just hear that right? Yes, it's free. And it can do basically everything that Windows or Mac does. I'll probably put a download link in the description of this video. You can download an ISO file of either 32 or 64 bit, which you can either burn to a CD or USB and dual boot with your PC or Mac, or you can download a program called VMware and run it in a virtual machine. You could also download VirtualBox. VirtualBox is another common program. Anyways, moving along. This is just kind of an overview of Linux Mint KDE version 13. Woo. Anyways, it actually looks a lot in a way kind of like Windows to a point. If you notice along the bottom of the screen, you have kind of a taskbar. On the far left you have your main button, which is called the Kickoff Applications Launcher. You then have a Show Desktop icon and a Dolphin File Manager button. That's a, it's like your quick launch here. I've added Dolphin to the file browser. To the right, all your beautiful notifications and your time. If you click the time, it brings up a calendar. The main desktop area is what looks a little different. Unlike Windows with its classic icons, you can actually add widgets to this desktop. I added a, my home folder here. It shows all my home, so all the folders in my home directory. I also added a beautiful weather widget, which is pretty cool. Comes in handy. You can hit this button in the top right corner to get a ton more options about everything you can do add widgets etc. Anyways let's go to the bottom left corner of the screen and look at the kickoff application launcher. We'll just call it the application menu or whatever. We click it. Here it is. Now you notice along the bottom of it there are multiple tabs. Right now we're in the first one, the favorites tab. This just shows direct buttons to your audio player, web browser, the terminal, which is kind of like a command prompt in Windows, instant messenger, um, IRC client, the software manager, where yes you can get a bunch of software since it is hard to find Linux software on the web, it's all been compiled in one place, and system settings. We'll look at the software later. Software Manager later, by the way. The second tab is the Applications tab. All your applications here are categorized by graphics, which includes like photo editing, internet, pretty obvious. We've got Firefox, the web browser. I added Skype. We have instant messaging, email, etc. Then is multimedia. You have your media player. All that great stuff. Office. This comes with LibreOffice. L-I-B-R-E-O-F-F-I-C-E. -E, right there. It has all the programs you expect, and like almost like you'd find in Microsoft Office. Except it's free. Settings. Shows you some of your settings at a glance. You can go straight into system settings to view all of your settings. System. Well, you got some different system settings here, including your Dolphin file manager. Utilities is actually pretty cool, a bunch of different text editors, stuff like that. We even have some accessibility options in here. And help. 
Oh, and look, it brings up the beautiful help wizard. Help center, excuse me. Next in our main menu here, we have computer. You can view the software manager, which we'll take a look at in a second. Then system settings. Then we have the synaptic package manager, which is basically an alternative to the software manager, but yeah, I don't like it as much. We then have our terminal here, and a run command. Below that, we have some of our common locations on the computer, such as your home directory, networks, root, trash, and Bluetooth. Below that is all our removable devices. Right now, I just have my SD card. The next tab is Recently Used. that just shows some of the apps and devices and folders you've recently been in. And the final tab, one of the most important ones, despite your applications, where you can log out, lock, save your session, switch users, put the computer to sleep or hibernation, restart your computer, or shut it down. So you've got all that there. From anywhere in this menu, you can also search for anything you want, like apps or documents. Now, I'd like to show you system settings real quick, as it's the bottom option here in favorites. Just click it, and here it is. I'll maximize it so you can see it easier. This is the system settings dialog. Probably looks rather similar to the system settings in Mac OS X. Um, however, a bit different from the Windows control panel. All these options are categorized pretty nicely, as you have different appearance options for different parts of the operating system in these first two columns. You then have network and internet options in this third one. All your hardware options that you'd need would be are in the fourth one here. And administrative options for secure logon screens, user management, etc. are in the bottom column here. It's pretty easy to navigate the system settings. Notice it also has a search bar at the top. Great time to look at the title bars here. They look very similar to Windows. You have your title in the center, then below that some options, as well as most apps having a search box. And then you have a help button on the far top right. Followed next to that, to the right, is minimize restore and maximize and then your close button so very similar to Windows pretty much reverse to Mac OS X as Macs are the headlight buttons on the left now real quickly towards the end of this I would just like to take a quick look at the software manager as since Linux Mint KDE 13 is not the world's widest known operating system. It's hard to find software on the internet, so all of the software out there has been packaged into the software manager. This is an absolutely amazing app. I love it. As right as you open it here, it shows you all your different categories of apps you could possibly want. And whoops, sorry about that. By the way, the taskbar looks a lot like Windows. It shows all your open apps down here. See? If you look down at the bottom left, next to the start thing, it says Software Manager. If you hover over it, it gives a preview. Anyways, this looks quite nice, as you've got all the categories you need. You have featured apps, all packages, which, oh my god, is that like 38,000? Internet, sound and video, graphics, office, games, accessories, system tools, fonts, science and education, and programming. So there's a ton. At the top right, you also have a search box. I could search for Skype. It's an audio and video instant messenger. Search and press enter. Here it is. As you can see, this top one, you can even review it. It's gotten 3 out of 5 stars by 350 people. If you double click it, it takes you to an info screen where you can see screenshots, info about it, reviews. I've already installed it, so this button here says remove. However, if you've yet to get it, it will say install. Packages install quite easily and quickly.
So software manager is quite nice in fact. I'm afraid I've run out of time as this is just skimming the surface of what you can do in Linux Mint KDE 13. If I was talking too fast this entire time, those letters, actually the whole name, Linux Mint KDE 13. There you see Linux Mint, then just add the letters KDE, and then it's version 13. I know it's a long name, I wasn't the one who came up with it. I'll have another video on customization and what you can customize in this operating system, which is a lot. So that's why I'm going to make it into a whole separate video. But all I can say right now is I would recommend Linux Mint KDE to a bunch of people. Someone who just wants a free but good operating system that resembles Windows or Mac OS X. This has been the Tech Network 98, and please subscribe to my channel, like this video, write comments, whatever you guys love to do. And watch out for my next Linux Mint KDE video, where I'll be talking about the customization in this amazing operating system. Goodbye!